Should you buy a new or an old car? And notice how I didn't say used, I said old car. In this video, I will give you a full breakdown of the real car ownership cost for both new and old cars. Before we get going, I wanna apologize because there's a lot of background noise that you're gonna hear in this video because my neighbor decided to do home renovations just when I was trying to shoot this video, so I had to move everything out here. As of the making of this video, the average cost of a new car in 2023 is about $48,000 and is expected to break the $50,000 mark sometime this year. Historically, the biggest chunk of money in the cost of ownership of a new car is depreciation. In the first year alone, a new car can lose as much as 30% in value. In the last few years, companies like CarMax and Carvana have gained a lot of popularity. These companies offer you a relatively less expensive alternative to buying a new car at the top of its value by something they call pre-owned and pre-owned is a fancy term for Hughes. Typically people associate the term pre-owned with a car racing year model with low miles that is usually within warranty. Do not confuse this with the certified pre-owned. Companies like CarMax offer service agreements that are commonly known as extended warranties, but in reality, these are not extensions of the original warranty. They have nothing to do with the original manufacturer's warranty and have certain limitations. A max care service agreement from CarMax runs at about $2,000 depending on the car for about 100,000 miles of coverage depending on the vehicle you pick. And you can pay for this upfront or it can be added to the car loan. This is a good alternative, but the problem I see with this is that it doesn't address the second biggest chunk of a car ownership cost, which is financing. The average price of a used car between one and five years old right now is almost $32,000 in loan terms are typically between 24 to 84 months. Let's say that you finance a used car that cost you $32,000 and you have an average credit, which in America is 716, a five-year loan with an APR of 10% will cost you almost $8,800 just in financing over the life of the loan. Keep in mind that this amount doesn't include sales tax, dealer transaction fees, and registration. And if, if you add the $2,000 of a service plan to that car, the amount finance grows to new heights. But let's go back to new cars. Here's a scary stat. In the first three years of ownership on a $48,000 new car, you would have lost $14,400 to depreciation. To that, add the finance charges for the first 36 months on a five-year loan, and you would have made 36 payments of $928 for a combined interest amount of over $6,000. In total, an average new car would have cost you $20,745 in the first three years of ownership in depreciation and financing alone. So stop the video right now and please tell me if you have enough money to buy the average new or pre-owned car in cash. I know I don't. In fact, the latest survey of consumer finances estimates that the median bank account balance in the United States right now is $5,300. So it is fair to say that most of you watching this video are financing a car if that car was purchased within the last three years. And that is why the premise of my video revolves around buying an old car. And when I say old, I really mean old because as prices of new and newer vehicles remain pretty high, those prices have dragged the prices of older used cars as well. I went to CarMax.com searching for an old car with relatively long life left for under $10,000. And please note that at least when I browsed through their inventory, the app didn't allow me to select anything under $9,000. The reason why I went with CarMax is because you can streamline the process and have the option of buying an extended service agreement or extended warranty or a service agreement for peace of mind. I dealt with CarMax in the past and one of the things that I like about them is that you don't have any negotiation to do. It's more of a take it or leave it approach so you know that you pay the same as the guy next to you. The lowest priced car that I found at CarMax was $95.99. And it was a 2013 Fiat 500. Those cars were so unreliable when they were new and I can only imagine at 125,000 miles. So CarMax was not an option. So I went to Auto Trader and I searched for a reliable car under $10,000. My search was only for private party offerings because in my experience, dealerships uh, have postings on Auto Trader. They're not always real and their listings are just sometimes just hooks to get you into the lot. And I opted for single owner vehicles because I believe that you can tell a lot about a car by knowing who owned it since new. Usually a single owner vehicle tends to be a little bit more expensive, but in my experience, it's worth the premium. And now arbitrarily, I only search for vehicles from brands that I trust, especially as the miles pile up. And here I am a little biased because of my own ownership experience. So I went with Toyota and Honda, but please let me know in the comments if there's other vehicles from other brands that you trust as well as the miles go up. 
And check this out. The newest car that I found within 50 miles from me was a 2012 Honda Civic for $1 shy of $10,000 and it had 109,000 miles. So it had plenty of life left in it. And I think that was a good deal because you could probably negotiate it to maybe $9,500 or so maybe $9,000. And another advantage with going with private party is that you can avoid all the dealership fees. To try to bring you a little bit more value in this video, I searched for common problems with the 2012 Honda Civic and I like to use a website called repairpal.com as I have found it to be informative in the specific models that I have bought in the past. And as expected, I didn't find any terminal issues with a 2012 Honda Civic. And the issues listed for it are usually pretty easy and affordable to fix. For example, the average cost to replace engine mounts, which is listed as a common issue with that car, is about $1,000 for parts and labor. And as old as the car is, it still offers most of the safety features found in modern cars, unlike, for example, my 1989 BMW. But keep in mind that this is still an 11-year-old car with over 100,000 miles, so expect issues to pop up during your ownership. Then you begin your journey at addressing the maintenance and repairs required to keep it on the road for as long as you can. Let me quote something that I found on a website called HondaTheOtherSide.com. Honda Civics are known for their reliability and longevity. The 2012 Honda Civic is no exception. It can last up to 250,000 miles with regular maintenance, end quote. So I would say that my search for a reliable car for under $10,000 was a success. Yes, you can find reliable cars for a lot less than $10,000, but this is just an example of how you don't need to get yourself in debt in order to drive a reliable car. Keep in mind that the older the year model of the vehicle, the more problems you can run into in the long term. For example, things like rust for those of you that live in colder climates. Again, the average new car will cost you almost $21,000 in the first three years of ownership, while an old car can give you three years of relative reliability for half that. But it's undeniable that driving a new car has a lot of perks, but again, these perks will cost you money. Those of you that follow my channel know that I've gone with the old car approach and six months into it, I spent a lot of money on my Acura TSX and I haven't felt the benefits of buying a car for cash as I have been addressing repairs and just aesthetic issues with the car. But eventually, if the car remains to be reliable, I'll be saving a lot of money versus buying a new car or versus the last two vehicles that I've owned before this one. And I'll leave you the link to that video right here. Driving an old car is a gamble and you can improve these odds in your favor by picking a car from a brand with a good reputation of longevity such as a Toyota or a Honda. Another argument that can be made is that while well, the average cost of a new car is near $50,000, there's plenty of cars that sell for a lot less than that. The most affordable car in the United States for 2023 is the Nissan Versa, which retails for shy of $16,000, but that comes with a manual transmission. A Versa with an automatic transmission is listed for $17,500, but it's impossible to purchase one without paying $1,095 for shipping and handling. So out the door, it will cost you $18,595 plus dealer and preparation fees. And this is for a car with a new vehicle warranty and all of the components in the vehicle are brand new so it should give you plenty of years of trouble-free miles. But at almost $20,000, it will take the median savings of poor Americans to buy one of the cheapest new cars on the market today, cash. So as you can see, making a decision of buying new versus old is not as simple as many aspects must be considered. Would you have the cash to address unexpected repairs in an old car? Would you have the time and would you have the patience to deal with all the legwork that takes to keep an old car on the road? If your answer to both of these questions is yes, then maybe the old car is the best route for you. But what if not? What can you do? You can find a comfortable midpoint. Buy an affordable new or pre-owned car and put as much money down as you possibly can to help mitigate the cost of financing and try to have the car paid off as soon as you can and make sure that the loan that you commit to doesn't have any prepayment penalties. I hope I brought you enough value in this video. I know that this format of videos doesn't do that well in views, but I felt that it was important to make because lately my close ones have seen me struggling with my tool cars and they always tell me that I just should drop them and get a new car. And sometimes I wonder that myself when I'm riding the trolley or walking miles when I leave the car at the mechanic once again for unexpected repairs. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.